My name is Andrew. If you don't know me, you should subscribe because like, why not? You should also hit the notification bell down below to be notified every time I upload a new video as soon as I upload a new video. But anyway, today I'm going to be doing my June wrap up and show you all nine of the books that I got through in June. I haven't sat down to film a video in a while because I was on vacation. I went to Cancun and I went camping at a state park where I live, like near where I live. And it was so fun, but I've been wanting to film again and get back into YouTube stuff. So I'm glad to be back. It's like no time has passed for y'all watching my videos, but for me, it's been a while since I've got to film and sit down and just talk about books. So I'm very happy. <laughs> I had such a great reading month. I read nine books, which is, I was so close to reading 10, but I got stuck on one book and I didn't finish it. So it's not in this wrap up. You'll have to wait till next month to hear my thoughts on the book that took me forever, put me in a slump and I did not like it. Well, I didn't like it that much, but anyway, so I read these nine books, I had a couple three stars, a couple five stars and mostly four stars, but let's just get into it. First book I read was An Emotional Great Delight by Tahid Mafi. This one came out, I believe, like June 1st or something like that. I finished it fairly quickly um, when June started. This one is a hard-hitting contemporary. It's a slice of life book. I had never really heard that term until recently, until I read this book, and now I've been hearing it kind of everywhere. So I don't know if that's a new thing or an old thing, but it's the first time I had heard of it. And it really did make sense to describe the setting and the timeline of this book. It was definitely just literally a slice of the main character Shadi's life. But I gave this book five stars. I really liked An Emotion of Great Delight. I think Tahida Mafi puts a lot of heart and soul into her books and you can definitely tell when you read them. I did have a couple problems with it and my friend Ermin expressed to me a lot of concerns that she had and I was like, whoa, that makes a lot of sense. And it's things that I didn't pick up on at first. So it's gonna be interesting to see all the reviews and what a lot of people think and if certain things in this book do get brought up and do get talked about more. On the inside of the book, it says that Emotional Great Delight is a searing look into the world of a single Muslim family in the wake of 9-11. It's about a child of immigrants forging a blurry identity, falling in love, and finding hope in the midst of a modern war. That sums it up, I think, pretty well without going into um, a lot of the heavier details, spoilers, and stuff like that. But the main character, Shadi, is just going through what I think is the worst time of her entire life the worst piece of her entire existence is what we get to see here and it's filled with so many sad deep hurting painful emotions and i just i cried these teardrops on here you know you can see them yeah those are teardrops okay those are my giant teardrops from reading this book but there was so much going on and so many different avenues that this book could have taken it's a thin book it's very small so I feel like there wasn't enough time to explore all the things that needed to be explored and that was my only flaw with the book. That was the only downfall that I think it had really. And yeah, besides that, there's a couple trigger warnings, actually kind of a lot of trigger warnings. Um, I don't remember all of them, but definitely I would check that out, try to find a list somewhere online. But one of the big ones that I remember is like a suicidal attempt, depression, a lot of things like that. So um, those are some things to be aware of when you're going into this book. It does deal with a lot, so be prepared for that. But yeah, that was an emotion of great delight. So then I read From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. My dog is here. Hello, Ollie. Um, so this one, I ended up giving four stars. I didn't think that I would enjoy it as much as I did. I kind of thought that it would be just something that was funny, but it was actually a pretty good book. It's huge. Um, and for how huge it is, it did go by fairly quickly. And I really went into it looking at it where I know that Jennifer L. Armentrout is specifically targeted to um, an audience that likes Sarah J. Mass, and I knew that she was going to be similar to that in some regards, and she was. And I'm a sucker for Sarah J. Mass, so I did like it, and it was no surprise to me. But this book was overall pretty good. I'm not going to give you a synopsis because I'm pretty sure you've heard of this book and you've probably read it. I'm kind of late to the game. But yeah, I gave it four stars and I wasn't disappointed and I do want to pick up the next one. So then I read The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. You've probably heard me talk about this in recent videos because ever since I read it, I could not shut up about it and I'm still not done. I gave it five stars. I think that this was such a good book. Oh my gosh. I've seen people recently, for some reason, it came out a while back, but I saw someone recently on Twitter like... Kind of bashed this book and I was like 
people are so bold with showing that they have no taste like I don't know I just don't get it I could never be me but <laughs> no I'm just kidding this book was actually so good I just personally I just think this book is so brilliant so it's about a girl named Alessandra Stathos who decides she wants to be queen so what is she gonna do she's gonna make the king fall in love with her duh that's how you get to be queen and when that happened she was like okay I don't really want the love part. I don't really want the husband part. I just want to be queen. So let me get the king to fall in love with me, kill him, and then rule by myself. And like, she's a genius. <laughs> and seeing her trying to pull this off along with the other things and themes and issues and uh, situations that arise in this book was very entertaining, I think. And it was just a very good book. So yeah, five stars. I then read another book that really surprised me, which was Crave by Tracy Wolf. I remember getting this copy actually sent to me by my friend Connor. Um, he sent it to me for my birthday. So uh, that's just another little thank you to Connor. But yeah, I keep the little gift notes in the back. So whenever I finished reading this one, I had got to that. And I remembered somebody sent it to me, but then getting to read that all over again was kind of funny and just remembering that my friend sent it to me was just really nice and special also the fact that connor dragged tb in the back of this and said happy birthday andrew i hope this is actually good because tb loves it but his taste is questionable you know uh that's very true but anyway we're not gonna um bash tb in this video for too long but no crave was so good i gave it four stars i was so surprised it's definitely one that if it took itself too seriously if the author took herself too seriously it wouldn't have been as good as it was but the fact that she's not really taking herself too serious makes it okay and makes it funny and entertaining and all the things so i really enjoyed this one it's about a girl who ends up having to move to alaska and go to a boarding school with her cousin because something happens to her parents and she finds herself in a new world and a new life and she's just wondering why everybody at the school is being so mysterious so sus and like just not being welcoming at all and she finds out a lot of things, a lot of monstrous things going on. And that's just how the story is. I'm not going to say any more because spoilers, but you can look at this book. It looks a lot like Twilight. You can guess what's happening here. You can guess the vibes that are going on here. But I loved it. <laughs> it was just really good. So then I also read Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I started this finally. It doesn't even feel real. Vicious was a series that I wanted to read for so long. Um, and I forgot because this month just felt so long, I swear. Like, I just, I feel like I was so busy. But um, I just, I finally got to read it. It was in the mix of me going to Mexico and all this stuff. So it was like a book that I will look back on and always think, oh yeah, I went to out of the country for the first time when I read that book. So it's just kind of special. I finished it on the plane. My first ever plane ride. It was just a lot, okay? A lot of things were going on. But Vicious. Um, Vicious is pretty much about two friends that are in college and they get assigned to do a certain project. One of them chooses something that takes things way too far, involves supernatural things. And yeah, that's pretty much all I can say without giving too much spoilers. You don't know much going into this book. So I'd say that's the best way to read it is not knowing anything because um, I was definitely surprised. Hadn't heard any spoilers, thank God. And so, so that's just the way to go into Vicious. But I had heard so many things about it for so long. I'm so glad I finally read it. I did give it four stars. It was really good. Um, V.E. Schwab, I think that she wrote this series a lot better than she did A Darker Shade of Magic. I don't know. A Darker Shade of Magic was young adult fantasy. This one is adult, I guess, dark fantasy. Um, kind of realistic fantasy, if that's a thing. I don't know. But this one's adult, and there was a lot, a lot of adult themes. There's a lot of um, kind of bashing or going against anti-religious semantics semantics is that the right word a lot of themes like that um there's some of that in here there's some big trigger warning for suicide um or just taking your own life uh, yeah if you've read it, it that makes sense but so yeah there's a lot of dark themes and heavy themes in here but V.E. Schwab I think she thrives in that I think she's really good at writing stuff like that so it was overall very good okay so then I also uh did a reread of Thumb Glass I know I just finished rereading the whole series this year I know I'm not supposed to be doing any more rereads but I couldn't help myself okay I listened to it on audio it's five stars obviously people are gonna be so tired of me talking about Throne of Glass but I just love that series so much it's like my new obsession I just I had to I just needed something to listen to and I was like Throne of Glass is free on YouTube so I got it and I just 
I had to, okay? Then I read Twice Shy by Sarah Hogle. I had seen a lot of people specifically on book Twitter talking about this book for a while. Oh my gosh, I forgot my bookmark was in there. Um, I was late to it. I bought it when everybody was talking about it and then the hype died down and then my hype for it died down and then I just had it sitting there and it's this bright yellow book and I don't read contemporaries and then I was just like, what am I gonna do with this? So I read it. Um, I took it to Mexico with me. I felt like it was a easy little read and it was, it's pretty short. Um, let me tell you what it's about. <laughs> so it's about this girl named Maybelle Parrish, which I think is just, it's just a plain bland name. The, the guy, the guy, the love interest in here, his name is Wesley. It's just, it's the plainest names. I can't, I don't like that. That's why I like fantasy. I need some weird names like to keep me entertained when like they talk or anything. But what happens here is Maybell basically inherits a house from a relative, a log, a deceased relative. And along with that, the groundskeeper also has inherited the same house, the same exact uh, will. Like they have the same, um, like they both have to share it so we're trying to figure out what's gonna happen how are they gonna share it oh no like they're gonna have to fix up the house together they're gonna have to stay in close quarters together oh no um it was kind of cliche but it was actually pretty sweet pretty cute it was okay i can see why people um did like it but i gave it three stars um <laughs> it was just an okay read for me didn't grip me too much didn't have me crying wasn't a sucker for the love but it was still okay so then i went back to the villains duology and I read Vengeful by V.E. Schwab which is the sequel to Vicious. I don't know why that sentence was so hard for me. Um, so Vengeful is the sequel and it is a very clear continuation of the story. It's just something that I don't think was necessary. Um, if she was gonna do what she did in here I'd rather her just have left it alone honestly because I read up that she had originally meant to do a trilogy. So some of the things in here, since she decided to not do a trilogy and do a duology and just combine it into this book, it didn't work. There was a lot of things at the end that I still needed some answers for, still needed some big explanations. Um, and she threw in a bunch of new characters and things just didn't completely add up at the end, which is not what you want when you wrap up a series. So it didn't leave me happy. It didn't leave me with a good vibe for the whole series. So I wish I would have just read the first one or just, I wish somebody would have told me um, that the second one isn't as good because I did give this one three stars. So that was really disappointing. It was the most disappointing end to a series that I've ever read. And so I was just angry just angry but you know the journey was still fun I didn't know where it was gonna go but then when it just ended like that I was like are you serious I, like why did I go through that for that ending but if you're like me and you cannot stop at just the first book in a series you have to finish the whole thing obviously you're gonna read it obviously it's fine it just wasn't the best thing ever which not all books are gonna be but we can wish we can dream we can hope <laughs> but yeah so this was a uh, three star so the final book that I read was another reread it was kind of midnight by Sarah J Mass. I read this um it's the second book in the Throne of Glass series and I I had to I had to do it. I had the time, I had the motivation. I really wanted to continue. I'm trying to get to keep going until we get to Rowan, which I did start Air Fire this month, so we've already got to Rowan, but anyway, so yeah, I just continued that and um I guess I'm gonna reread the whole series now because I'm already in the middle of it and I just have to keep going. There's no way to go but forward, so this was one step towards forward, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, that was all the books I read. I'm very happy to be sitting down and filming like I already said. Hopefully I'll get another video filmed today. But yeah, I don't know. I just miss you guys. I feel like I haven't been as interactive as I've wanted to be um, in replying to comments and all that. So I'm really sorry if you commented on any of my recent videos and I haven't replied. Trust me, I've been reading them. I do read them as they pop up on my phone. They make me so happy. They make my day. I just haven't had the time to sit there and reply to all of them, but I really do want to do that soon. So I'm sorry, Ollie. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just fixing his hair. But yeah, so if you ever want to keep up with me, you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I will link them down below. They're always in the description. You can go there to just keep up with me um in my daily life but that's pretty much all i have to say guys so comment down below um one of your favorite books you read in june and that's pretty much all i have to say so i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one bye I